This is a cell made in Desmos. Life is good for the cell, it does cellular activities, it makes ATP so it can grow, and... Wait, there's two of them. This is getting out of hand. Wait, stop! No, 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 no! I lied, we're actually gonna be going over some vocabulary first. So chromatin is DNA wrapped around the histone proteins. These condense in cellular division to form chromatids. Why am I telling you this? Because it gets important later on. Also, for the purposes of me not losing all of my sanity, we're gonna use an imaginary cell with six chromosomes in total for all illustrations. So n equals 3, n2, n equals 6, where 2n is actually the normal number of chromosomes. Because n stands for the number of unique sets of chromosomes in a cell, and there are two because this is called a diploid cell. The interphase has three phases. Yeah, it's divided into G1, S, and G2. The interphase is the period between when the cell actually divides. It's the longest period of the cell cycle, and it's spent preparing for the M phase. The G1, G standing for gap phase, is actually a period of rapid growth of the cell despite what it sounds like. The cell grows larger and produces organelles and proteins. This is basically normal cellular operations. Then comes the S phase, which stands for synthesis. This is when the duplicate copies of the DNA needed for cellular division are synthesized. After this point, the cell contains two times more DNA than before. So it would be 4n equals 12 now, except it's not because you count the chromosomes by the centromeres, so it will still be 2n equals 6 because the new chromosomes share the centromeres with the originals. The S phase also duplicates the centrosomes, which are important later on. In the G2 phase, the cell is serious about replicating. This is when it duplicates organelles and molecules needed for cellular division. And by duplicating organelles and molecules, I mean basically a duplicate of the non-chromosome related ones such as the mitochondria, so the two daughter cells have a copy of each. By the end of the interphase, the cell is ready for the next phase. It has the molecules and organelles required, two complete sets of DNA, it just needs to divide, and it will do that next in the M phase. The M phase is the shortest phase of the cell cycle. It gets its name from the process of mitosis, but it has two different steps, mitosis and cytokinesis. This is how a cell goes from 1 to 2. You can observe the M phase happening by turning around to talk to your friend while waiting in the school lunch line. Once you turn back, you'll notice the amount of people in front of you has doubled. But if you look really closely, you can see that their skin cells are constantly undergoing the M phase because skin cells are actually one of the fastest replicating cells in the human body at about 24 hours per cell cycle, whereas other cells can take up to 1 year per cycle. The mitosis phase of the M phase has 4 phases. The prophase, the metaphase, the anaphase, and the telophase. This can be remembered with this very useful acronym. The cell splits in 4 stages, it's really not too hard, or T-C-S-I-F-S-I-R-N-T-H, or just use PMAT, we can't stop you. The prophase is the first and longest phase of mitosis. It takes half the total time for mitosis to complete. The duplicated chromatins condense into sister chromatids, which attach to each other on a point called the centromere. Meanwhile, meiotic spindles, structures made out of microtubules and proteins, form from centrosomes, which have centrioles inside of them, in the case of an animal cell, plant cells don't have these. Uh, these ensure that chromosomes are divided equally. There are a pair of centrosomes and spindles originating from them per cell. And similarly to real life twins, they absolutely hate each other, so they actually move towards opposite ends of the cell. Also, the nuclear membrane that makes up the nucleus is gone by this phase. In the metaphase, the chromosomes line up across the center of the cell, and the meiotic spindles from both poles connect to the centromeres of each chromosome. This is how chromosomes will be separated equally later. And by later, I mean right now because it's time for the cell to move to the anaphase. Basically what happens here is that the sister chromatids are split apart. They move towards opposite ends of the cell to the centrosomes. If you count the chromosomes by the centromeres, which is what you're supposed to do, the count has doubled in the cell. At this point, the cell is still one thing, maybe a bit deformed, but still one cell. This is where the telophase of mitosis happens, and also where cytokinesis happens. In telophase, the spindle fibers are broken, the chromosomes, which are super condensed, become less condensed. At the same time, a new nuclear membrane forms around the two groups of chromosomes at the opposite ends of the cell. At this point, mitosis is complete. Meanwhile, cytokinesis is happening. This is how one cell rarely becomes two. 
In animal cells, the membrane collapses inwards and splits, creating two roughly equal sized cells. Meanwhile, plant cells just plant a plate between the two cells that a cell wall and membranes grow out of. So what you're saying is that the parent cells eject the two new cells called the daughter cells? Yeah, somewhat, but it's not really like an ejection more than a new cell membrane or wall being formed between the two cells. So in some ways, it's like how I'm about to eject you from this aircraft. I said somewhat. After hitting a hangar roof at 625 knots, one should probably take a break. Cells don't have to worry about hitting hangar roofs, but they also do take breaks because of various reasons, such as a lack of nutrients or broken DNA. Cells sometimes would just say screw this, I'm out, and exit the cell cycle. These cells will not divide while they are in the G0 phase, which is what exiting the cell cycle is, and their current and only objective is to survive. However, cells can actually return from the G0 phase due to some stimulation, and G0 isn't a permanent condition in some cases. So, uh, welcome to the end! Anyways, thanks for watching, it's like 1am as I'm editing this, and I'm gonna go to sleep. Uh, bye! Also, uh, go, go read uh, Khan Academy if you actually want to learn about cells. Uh, ha have fun. Uh, yeah.